Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager. And specifically today we're going to take a look at how you manage users and groups using Profile Manager. Now as you can see in Server App we've got the main interface here. If we click this Open Profile Manager link down here, uh, that's going to take us to our Profile Manager uh, administrative page. Now. Uh, the beauty of this, normally you'll have to log in. Uh, I've already logged in, so that's why it's taking me right here. Uh, the beauty of this, though, is that you can access this uh, web interface from anywhere. Uh, anywhere that you've got internet access, you can access it as an administrator and then administrate all of your users and groups through this Profile Manager web interface. So it makes it very convenient if you need to change something on the fly or if you've, uh, if you've got a device that got lost and you want to uh, do something with it, you can uh, easily uh, access this interface here to make the changes. So today what we're going to talk about specifically is users and groups. And so we're going to talk about these two areas right here and I'm going to give you a bit of a tour of uh, what we've got here and how to set up profiles and those kinds of things here, for so you get a feel for uh, what that looks like group. and what's on the users pane. And you can see here I've got uh, all of my different users in here and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let me just pull up uh, one of my sons here so you can see what this profile looks like. And you can see he's got uh, different settings on his profile. He's got a general that uh, everybody has, so all the users in my list have. He's got certain restrictions I've put on his account. He's got parental controls uh, that I've put on there. And you see a download and edit here. Now the download button basically allows me to download this particular configuration profile so I can email it to him or on the particular machine I'm at, as soon as I hit download, then it opens the uh, system preferences for profile and wants to load those uh, particular profiles, but I'm just going to leave that alone. And then you can edit for this particular user. Now, I'm going to leave that alone because I want to show you the most efficient way is to edit through groups, not necessarily through users, especially in a family where you're saying, hey, I want the kids to have one profile and the adults to have another. Uh, it's better to do it through groups. So I'm just going to leave this alone for a second so I can show you that. But that's what the profile is for that particular individual. Then you have the devices that are linked to this particular uh, person. And so you can see I've got an iPod here that's linked to my son because he's got his own iPod Touch. And so anytime you use the device enrollment to enroll a device, then that device gets linked to the particular person who enrolled it. And so that's his uh, iPod there. And then I have activity. And now on this activity profile, what this shows is this shows any activity where I've pushed settings to devices and whether they succeeded or failed or not. And you can see here I had a failed attempt here uh, back in September, but then it got pushed again and then succeeded. So it succeeded and then they tried to push it again and it failed um, because it tried to do it twice. So that means that, that that was okay, that that profile went through. Then I've got an about section. And in the About section, what it does is it gives me the email address and name of uh, the short name of the person that I'm looking at. Uh, then it gives portal access. Can they enable remote management or not? And so all that means is can a person enroll a device into Profile Manager? Or if I disable that, then that means they can no longer do it. And you go, well, I can't click the button. Well, the way you would do that is you come into a uh, server here for your users. You go to the person that you wanted to uh, initiate that on. You'd say, um, edit accesses to, access to services. And then it will bring up a pane here that has all the services. And then all you need to do is uncheck Profile Manager right here. And then it takes that off. So if you don't want, you don't want your family to uh, have access to Profile Manager at all, that's how you take them off so that you don't have to ha worry about them getting access to it. Uh, and that check mark mark will go away. And then you also have the different groups that they're in. So my son's in uh, the general work group, which which uh, uh, server sets up automatically. He's in the everyone group because that means everyone every one of my users is in that. And he's in a kids profile that I created. Uh, you also see there's an apps button over here, but uh, there's nothing there because this is more for if you're creating apps in a business and deploying them. But that's not happening here. So you'll notice these different profiles here. Let me show you the groups because this is where you'll really want to make most of the changes is more on the group side. So you'll notice on the group side, I've got an everyone, work group, and kids profile. And you'll notice the everyone is all users. And you'll notice some familiar things here, right? We've got general, VPN, CalDAV, iChat, and CardDAV. Now, all of these things are things that show in my server app under Profile Manager. 
they show up right here, right? So here's those things. You got uh, iChat, iCal, address book, and VPN. And so because I set up those profiles, those are the settings for everyone, those settings show up here. These are the everyone settings right here. And now I could edit uh, these settings for everyone. And you'll notice if I just quickly, if I just hit the edit uh, button here, you'll notice that uh, I've already got a payload here. That just means that basically iChat is already set. I've already got information there on iChat. Uh, I've got CalDAV and CardDAV already set right here and VPN ready to go. Nothing else has been configured yet for this particular group, right? Everything else is just kind of the way it is. And so, um, and you notice it works for OS 10 and everything else. So I'll show you how this stuff works, but I wanted to give you kind of a quick look at where those things are set up. I'm going to use this specifically when I talk about the kids. Uh, you've got members in this particular group. So here's all the different members that are in the everyone group. Uh, activity in the everyone group, which I haven't had any because it's all kind of been direct download when we enrolled uh, everything. I've got the about, right, about this particular thing. And I could say, hey, I don't, I, if I didn't want to, you know, make the change in profile manager, come over here and say, I don't want anybody in the every, any one group to enable adding devices to it. Uh, I could do that as well. And then, of course, you've got the apps, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, notice here, too, let me go back to profile. You've got your work group. Uh, again, that's just a general one. That's the the different members that I've got listed. And then you've got a kids profile. Now, the kids profile, I, I, uh, I set up myself just by clicking this little plus button down here. Um, I set this up myself to, to add a, a group because I wanted to add a group here for the kids to have a profile for them so that my users in, in the kids group I could manage all by itself. And you'll notice it says settings for kids profile right here. And that's a very particular profile. Again, members, there's my, my boys in there. Uh, activity, here's the different push settings that got sent out to them to make some changes. Um, there's the about section again that tells me about them. Notice they can't enable remote management them as, as a group. Uh, that's not on there. Uh, so let me go into the profile to edit it just to show you what an edited profile looks like. And this works the same for individuals as it does for a group. All right, only this is going to up, be updated for everybody. So real quick, you'll notice I've got a general configuration here. I can say configure, and this is for Mac OS 10 and iOS. Uh, I can say, hey, I want it to be automatic push or I want it to be manual download. Uh, and I can put a description in there and that kind of stuff, but that's a general um, setup there. I have the passcode, right? If I want to require certain types of passcode for my kids when they log into either their Mac or iOS uh, machines. Remember, any changes I make up here apply to both Mac computers and iOS devices. Down below, I can make distinctions. So I can say, hey, I want them to have a simple value, right? Doesn't matter what it is. I want to require alphanumeric where there's a letter in there as well as a number. I can say how long the password needs to be. I can say how complex does it need to be. Uh, maximum. Uh, I can also do the maximum number of, of uh, passcode age. How many days can that passcode stay there? Uh, I can do auto lock or not. So I can say, hey, I want the device to auto lock after a certain amount of time. How many um, passwords they can have uh, for iOS uh, in a row? Like I can say, hey, I only want you to have four, uh, you know, different types of passcodes that you can repeat. So every fourth time you can repeat, but you can't before that. Uh, again, the grace period. Uh, to lock a device, how long till the device locks, and the number of failed attempts, right? Now this one you probably don't want to set because if you fail beyond the number you set, then all the data on the device is erased. So don't touch this one because that'll drive you crazy when your kids mess it up. Uh, I can configure email here if I want to, exchange server, which most of you are not going to have, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, LDAP, which is my open directory. Again, don't need to do that because I did it in server app, but you can because this is an industrial application. Uh, CalDAV, uh, if you want your network, if you want to configure the network ahead of time, right, where you come in here and you uh, basically set up your Wi-Fi network, what's your uh, Wi-Fi name here, you want it to auto-join or not, uh, what type of security do you have, right, WEP, or usually most of if you have Airport uh, Extreme, it's going to be WPA, WPA2, and then the password, and then that automatically pushes that to uh, any device that your kids log into. Uh, again, VPN, which we already talked about it being easier to set up the other way. Uh, and then you got these two certificate and security things. You don't need these. These are more for advanced users that are working in organizations. All right, so leave those, those two things alone. Uh, you can set up web clips if you want. 
And, you know, kind of just a neat little thing. If you've got uh, a certain web clip, like you say you want to check the news, you got a news web click, you put news, you put the URL for the news. You can say whether it's removable or not on iOS apps. You can put an icon that you choose and upload, and then whether it's going to be full screen or not, and then it gets pushed to the device, and now all of a sudden on your iOS device it shows with a button, or it shows on the widgets on your Mac devices. And so that's another way to do it. Uh, and then this, this security and privacy basically is just whether or not you want to send things to Apple or not. Uh, so in other words, you want to allow Apple to use the data for diagnostics. Now, you can then fine-tune this even further to do restrictions on iOS apps, right? There's, there's different things I can do on here. And this is really neat because a lot of times you have iOS apps in your household. So you can say, hey, I don't want to allow my kids to use the camera or FaceTime. You know, maybe your kid keeps taking a million pictures and it fills up the memory. So you go, I'm just going to get rid of that problem by just checking this off. And now they can't use the camera anymore. And it removes the app on the on the iOS device. Or I don't want them filling up my photo stream. So I check that. So any pictures they take, great, stay on the device. But they don't get clogging up my photo stream. Uh, and all kinds of other things here that you can turn on and off. And they're pretty self-explanatory. You can allow these things or not. Uh, but it allows you to take control over your devices. You can even say what applications they can or can't use. Maybe you don't want them to use the iTunes music store because they keep buying music and so you want to stop them from doing that. You uncheck that, they no longer have the application so they don't even know that they have access to that because it's not there anymore. Uh, and then media content. And this is where you set your ratings, right? The different ratings that you want them to have for iOS uh, iOS devices, right? So for your different kids, I want it to be PG. You know, I want the different TV shows to be uh, this, a certain TV show rating. And then uh, different types of apps. I don't want any apps that aren't rated at least 4 plus or 9 plus, you know, that kind of stuff. And then you can uncheck whether or not you want explicit music or podcasts or not. All right, so you can put that payload together and that'll get pushed to your devices once you save it. You can subscribe to calendars uh, as well if you've got calendar subscriptions, which most of you won't, but if you wanted to, you can configure that here. And then there's APN, which is just another access point name type of thing, more for professionals, not for home users, so don't worry about that one. Uh, now, you can do the exact same thing with your Mac. You can do restrictions. You can configure iChat for everyone. Uh, you can do even do login items. If you look at this, you can say, hey, I want these particular applications to launch at, at login. Uh, I want these particular folders to open when, they, when someone logs in. Uh, and these user mounts, right? So remember before I showed you a quick way to kind of move a, a drive to auto mount when someone launches a computer? Well, if you wanted to do it uh, from here, you could do it from here as well. Uh, I've had more success doing it the other way that I showed you in the uh, how to mount, uh, you know, AFP drives and things like that. But you can try it here as well, and it, it, it's supposed to be uh, have the ability to be set up here. Uh, you've got the ability to set up mobility applications, and I'm going to do a specific screencast on that, so I'll leave that alone. But basically, that just allows you, if you've got home folders on your server, for that for people to have those be uh, to those to sync to their uh, laptop. And then when you take your laptop outside the home, you can work on it. When you come back into your server environment, it syncs back to your home folder that's on your server. And I'll show you how to do that. You can control the dock. So you can configure how the dock even works in here, whether it's got, you know, where the dock's located, whether it's animated or not, what applications you want in the dock, you know, if you want folder items in the dock. I mean, it's really kind of neat. You can really fine tune the things that you see on your Mac. You can set up your printing setup. So what is your printer? What printers do you want on the list? How do you want people to use these printers? Uh, again, pretty self-explanatory, but neat to have. And then, of course, here is, here is parental controls. And this is what a lot of us want with our kids, right? You might want to hide profanity from the dictionary. You want to maybe limit access to websites by trying to limit access to adult sites. Or you want to say, hey, I, I want to only allow these URLs and I want to deny these. I don't want my kids going to these particular sites. You can set that up here and it gets pushed to their profile. Uh, then you've got time limits on this site. Now, to be honest with you, the time limits thing, I haven't got it to work very well. It, it, there are times it goes on and off and works, so you can give it a shot, but uh, I haven't had a lot of success with it. I think there's a bug there, but give it a shot. See if it works for you. Uh, like I said, it hasn't for me. But again, you can see, you can do parental controls from here without even touching their device. And then you could do custom settings if you want to. And uh, again, this is a little more advanced, but you can kind of set up, you know, different keys and different things like that. I'm not going to go into depth on it, uh, but there's a way that you can do that as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of things that I can configure here, and I'm doing it for the kids so that when I save these things, it automatically now is going to become a part of my kid's profile. So any machine, anytime they log into anything, it's going to push these changes to all of their devices. And and so I'm just going to cancel out because I'm going to leave that alone for now because I don't want to make those changes at this particular time. But those are different changes and things that I can make.
So hopefully that helps you get a feel for how to manage users and groups. And like I said, the best way to do it is to manage your users through groups if you can do it because it then affects multiple users. You only have to make the changes once and it affects all of them. And it's a great way to, uh, to make those things happen to your devices. So that's all I have for this week uh, on Lion Server. Hopefully that helps you get started. And I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.